Kalo kako, mahalo kalana ana mai no kia pukano a ha i o la loala, kalu e lua e kia ana mamona kea, a o iai ua pili no ma ke kahi ano, i ke kukulu ia o ia hale kilo ho ku o ka TMT, i ke kako, ma o loa aku ki a kea a me ka vai vai o na ha a vina, e kupu ana mai loko mai o ia ninu ne. Ano leila, o iai ma ka pukana mua i nana i a ia po ai a pili kiko i o ka oi hana kilo ho ku ma mauna kea, a me ka hihia o ka nui ana a e o ia oi hana ma luna o ia mauna ihi ihi o kakou. Ma keia pukana, e launa ana me keia mau hoa aloha la hui, a wala au no nga haa vina e kupu mai ana a me ke ano e paa mai ka ia e ia haa vina no keia mua aku. And so we have joining us for our discussion today, Jocelyn Don, Ulilio Woodside, and Drew Kanuha. Aloha kako. Aloha. And by way of brief introduction, Jocelyn grew up in Mililani and now lives in Honolulu. With an appreciation for the importance of connection to place, Jocelyn has become a passionate advocate for the ability to perpetuate the unique relationships and the practices that connect Kanaka to Aina, community, and our ancestors. Jocelyn is a graduate of the William S. Richardson School of Law, a licensed attorney in the state of Hawaii, and has worked in public policy and advocacy for Native Hawaiians for over 10 years. Aloha, Jocelyn. Aloha. Also joining us is Ulalia Woodside, who was born, raised, and still lives in Waimanalo. Ulalia's parents taught her a deep love of Hawaii's natural world. She carries the hula traditions of her mother and grandmother as a kumuhula, and Ulalia's career path started at the Department of Land and Natural Resources, where her father worked for many years as a wildlife biologist. Ulalia holds degrees in political science and Hawaiian studies, and she worked for nearly 14 years in cultural and natural resource management at the Kamehameha Schools, and in 2016 became the executive director at the Nature Conservancy of Hawaii. Ulalia has also served on numerous boards and commissions, including the State Natural Area Reserves Commission and the Board of Land and Natural Resources, as well as Hawaii Conservation Alliance. Mahalo yaoi Ulalia and aloha. And wrapping up our Pu'ulu Kuka Kuka today is Drew Kanuha. Drew was born and raised on the Kona side of Hawaii Island where his family has lived for generations. After graduating from Kalakehe High School, Drew went on to the University of San Diego to complete his bachelor's in political science, but then he returned home to serve his community. After working for several years in public policy and resource management, in 2012, when a new county council district was created for Central Kona, Drew threw his name in for candidacy and has served as the district's council member ever since. Mahalo Drew for your community service and leadership and for being with us today. Aloha. And with that, eho o malolo iki kako, and when we come back, we'll jump right into our kuka kuka with our guests. Aloha mai, e nga mamua haloa, mai ke kahi au au ai, ke kahi au au ako keia pai aina. E ia mako na hoa o Kaleo Oivi, e launa mai noi ke ia haa ule lau ma Oivi TV nei. Um, what did she just say? Stick around, you'll find out. Pumbai ule. Kaleo Oivi, a new Hawaiian language learning series now on Oivi TV, digital channel 326 and online at oivi.tv. Aloha, mahalo kanana ana mai ki a pukano a hai o la loala i pili yo mauna kea. One of the things that this situation obviously makes clear is that there is a body of law that sets aside certain protections for Native Hawaiian rights and practices. And Jocelyn, can you get start us up with what some of those foundational legal constructs might be? So as a result of the way that the Kingdom of Hawaii privatized land in Hawaii, um, private lands are uniquely subject to the rights of Native Hawaiian practices. What that means is Native Hawaiians can access lands even if they're private in order to uh, gather fish, um, cultivate uh, lo'i, etc. Uh, what that also means is that when planning for a project or development, you know, an assessment needs to be done on the practices and um, uh, resources that exist in that area. Uh, so as to mitigate any impact to the ability of Hawaiians to exercise their traditional and customary rights. 
Uh, you know, I, I think another uh, important and relevant construct is the fact that Hawaii's resources, uh, specifically our water resources, are managed for the benefit of the public. Um, and so what that means is that the utility of our land and resources require uh, an assessment of how it will impact, you know, Native Hawaiian specifically. You know, now that you're talking specifically, um, you know, about how these are unique or different, just to clarify, for example, our, our body of water law, if you will, mm -hmm. um, it's obviously not the norm. So give us an example of what the norm is and what it is here in Hawaii. So private property uh, in the U.S. generally means that you have a bundle of sticks, uh, and one of those bundle, and, and you know, one of the most important bundle of sticks is that you have the right to exclude others from your land. Mm -hmm. But in Hawaii, because of the way that land was privatized and the recognition of the king at that time of the intimate connection of land with our to our, you know, people on our land, uh, you know, those that stick didn't come mm -hmm. in that bundle, and so that's very uniquely uh, Hawaiian. Um, and even though that, that happened in the kingdom, you know, that still uh, permeates the laws today. It's the foundation of property law in Hawaii, basically. So how um, important, perhaps, is it that there is community engagement that perhaps ensured that that body of law would continue and more importantly, ensures that it'll continue to be applied and recognized? Right. So even during the kingdom, Native Hawaiians were um, vigilant about ensuring that their rights to practice their culture um, were preserved. And so when the first written laws were passed and when um, the king uh, uh, privatized the land, you know, those, uh, that language was put in there to ensure that. And we see that today. Uh, and we saw uh, an uprising in the 70s over you know, very egregious land management practices um, you know, we saw an uprising in our community to put a stop to that. And, and what resulted from that was the state constitution language, um, which kind of reiterates in many ways what um, the custom and usage was during the time of the kingdom, um, but kind of more concretely puts it into state law. Um, and, you know, even after that, we see the need for community to be vigilant and mindful about uh, making sure that those rights are continue to be respected. Uh, it's a con continuous challenge. As a practitioner, perhaps, Ulilio, what are your thoughts on some of this? Well, you know, I, I think about um, that time period and looking to establish those laws early on in the kingdom and trying to think about the way we lived our life. So we can call it culture, we can call it practice, but it was the way in which um, people living here needed to get food, needed to get water, um, how they needed to honor the spiritual realm. And so documenting those things that were requirements. So sometimes we look at cultural practices as a, a, separate, a separate thing that's not necessarily subsistence or not necessarily necessary for life of the people, but it is. And that continuum on islands, uh, because you, you have limited outside access to resources, means you have that special relationship um, to those plants, to that geography, to those species, or to those places. Um, if those activities hadn't existed, or we call them practices, mm -hmm. if that wasn't the way we lived our, our, our life, then these laws, these rights, if you will, would not have been here to ensure that that continuum of how we live in this place um, exists or is a lesson for us. What's been your experience, if any, um, Drew, in terms of these concepts of how different our laws um, and legal constructs are here in Hawaii in terms of the demographics of the district that you serve and some of the people in that district? Uh, very interesting point. Uh, we, you know, we, we try to set a balance, me being on the council, coming from the land of where I represent. It's, uh, it's an ongoing challenge uh, to not only are we educating ourselves of how mm -hmm. we were growing up and re-educating of how our parents and grandparents of how our kapuna uh, lived the land, but also educating the visitor from coming in and the people that want to live and live in such a beautiful place. I mean, we all live in an amazing place. Mm -hmm. And how do you balance out the needs for 
our culture, for our protection of our waters, our, our rights as Hawaiians, and the need to also create a, a, a thriving economy for everybody around us, everybody, you know, a great living situation for those that, that do come to visit because we live in such a unique place. So that's some of the challenges that we deal with every single day on the job. But it's also an opportunity to, to say, for all of us, let's live together. Let's, let's uh, take this as a challenge, take this as an opportunity to not only uh, have our culture ingrained in the visitor, but have them be part of who we are as Hawaiians and get that understanding not only to us, but all, you know, these, the, the people that come from all over the place, they'll go back and visit their family and, and they'll educate their family on how um, it is that the Hawaiians live uh, day to day. So it's a it's pretty cool challenge to uh, take on and I'm, I'm glad I'm in a position to be able to do that. Yeah, E ho o malolo i ki kako, a ke ho i mai e wala au hou kako no keia mea o ka malama Māori a me ka hana i keia mau hana kuuna a me ka malama i ka ike kuuna ma o kela hana ana. Ma mua ke kahua, ma hope ke kukulu. Pono he kahua paa ma mua o ke ku mai o ka hale. O kohuli lau kahua paa, O ka puna na leo no ia. Like it. Aloha manawa lo ii ka mei leo mako a leo. O ka puna na leo, he ka hua paa no ia no ko Hawaii ma wala kai o keia mua aku. E kai no aku no ma aha puna na leo ki ko oar. Aloha mahalo ka ho iho ana mai no keia pukano a hai o lalo wala. You know, some of the legal constructs that we discussed before the break are obviously meant to carve out a place and space for Native Hawaiians to continue, quote unquote, traditional practices, which implies that we actually have to be doing these things while we are also fighting to protect the ability to do them. So, Ulilia, what are some of the takeaways, in your opinion, in, as it relates to ensuring this continuum of traditional practice, even in our modern society, as things are evolving around us, we are still Hawaiians that are acting and being and practicing things that Hawaiians do. I, I think you're, you're hitting right on one of the big lessons and um, it's probably not enough time in the show or we're not the only four people that you know, can help contribute to that conversation. And um, you know, I think one of the challenges is just with those words, traditional practice. Mm -hmm. Yes, that's how it's carved out in the legal construct, in those, those laws, that the body of, of rights that we have. That word traditional sort of implies, you know, sort of past, um, historic, a moment, a snapshot in time before. It doesn't give us a sense of evolution, of being dynamic, of um, a continuum, which is what we are, mm -hmm. or that is the the lifestyle that we have had from before those those first Polynesians set voyage from where they came or we arrived here it's it's been an evolution of living in this place and finding um, the way in which to um, provide for our families and for our communities to fill our well-being from all of the spectrum of of well-being um, in this place and also to react to what's happening and going on and to, to change um, and so I, I think that's what becomes difficult is as our you know the our the interconnected nature of and the interdependent nature of who we are how we live in this place our culture if you will our practices is directly related to the geography the geology the biology the ecology whatever ology you want to <laughs> you want to choose to mm -hmm. to focus on and as those change you know so does our life way change and does it um, does it make it different or no less um, genuine or no less um, original? Um, but I, I think that's where, you know, from a kumuhula tradition and having that responsibility to think about and to do the connection between body and dancer and place and the environment, hula is a reflection, it is because of the environment, as that changes, as a kumu, you have to do the kumu parts, right? Mm -hmm. So kumu is a teacher, it's a source, but to 
ho'okumu means to create, it means to um, establish. Um, and, and that's all part of what we have to do is to remain relevant, to remain current, um, and to recognize that we are continuously learning. We're continuously learning about our place and we're continuing to carry on who we are and that life way of this place and honoring this place in all that we do, even as it changes around us. You know, um, as I'm listening to you talk and thinking about the fact that hopefully as um, things have changed and evolved and Hawaiians have continued these practices, that it's becoming a little more normal, hopefully, for even non-Hawaiians to recognize that there are these certain things that are set aside. Um, and I'm going to come back to you, Drew. What has been your experience, perhaps, if any, in policy decisions, discussions that may happen on the council as it relates to Hawaii Mokupuni? Uh, thank you for the question. It's, you know, it's great being on the council. I want to go give a little bit ba of background about who is on the council and why it means so much to talk about this. I am part of a great council of nine. There's a few members uh, that were part of a few court cases that helped, you know, with the situation that we're talking about right now. Uh, Karen Eoff and Miley David, uh, who were part of the Pash case, who were part of Kapa'akai. And so our discussions evolve daily about how to treat the rezonings that we do, how to move forward with different ordinances that might affect uh, traditional customary practices. Uh, you know, so it's great discussions to have. I think it's a, uh, an awesome time to be on the council because we, I'm, I'm, I'm just happy to have these conversations that we have the ability within our laws that give us that ability to, to um, talk about where we should uh, designate a certain area for uh, you know, the trails that people walk up and down the coast on. And you know, it's, set, it's a set of laws that we're guided by that we have to um, look at, but it's a great time to be on the council and make sure that that's provided for um, our people and for the future. So, thank you. Thank you. E ho maha ho kako a ke ho i mai e ho mau i ke yawala au ana no ke ko i ko i o ke komo i loko o ke yawa mau ona i hana a ho o kelle no ka pono o ka Hawaii. He mau ala ka i kia i a po eloa ko ke la me kia lahui a puni ka honua. Ke waku ma Hawaii. Ana ke i a po e ma ka o Hawaii e ho ola. Aho o pa aho i ke kahua o ka ike i ke iau. Aho i ho ana ke. No ka pono o nga hanauna e hiki mai ana. E nga nga aku i analoea The Masters, he puka i na hou ma o iwi kiwi ke kanela ki kohoe kolu lua ono. Ke holo nei he kanaha makahiki o kona ho ano kupuna, ho ola mauliola ma o ka ho ala i ke kilo ho ku. Ko ho i kai kapilina kanaka, ke kahu kahu makakau malama aina. A eia ke ho o lune i au kahi malama honua. Aina! Aina! I'm inspired by a global mission. E komo a holopu mai no, ma hoku lea ki ko se o mu. Um, Drew, before the break, we were talking a little bit about kind of the normalization, if you will, of some of these um, laws and policies that have been put into place as it relates to Native Hawaiian rights and practices, given your um, position on the council. You know, I also wanted to continue along that um, discussion point and kind of talk about this notion of engaging in the systems where decisions are being made, some that you know affect who we are as Native Hawaiians. Talk to me a little bit about your decision to engage um, in the way that you have and perhaps the importance of that in your opinion. Great question. I think it's so important to be engaged in the process and it was one of the fundamental things why I decided to become a council person for my district. Uh, you have better access to what's going on, you understand the process, and you, 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 you get to make decisions that benefit the people that you represent. So becoming part of the process, I felt it was a, 
a great opportunity to not only know what's going on, but to actually make a difference of how the laws are shaped, how we move forward with uh, how we want our kids to live, our grandkids. So it's, in, it's extremely important to be engaged in the process. You don't have to be a politician to be engaged. I'm not, I'm not stressing that. That was just my direction of how I thought I could best help my community. Um, but uh, for the laws that we pass, for the things that go through our system, we always try to advocate to the community, be part of the, be part of the process. We wanna be engaging in the beginning. You know, there's a lot of things that, um, that happen throughout the process that if we just work together in the beginning, formulate the ideas, formulate the policy, and let's all try to figure out that middle ground of how to get to where we wanna go, I think it's, it'll be, that's how, you, that's how I drive the bills, that's how I drive policy making. Um, so it's, it's really important that, that that's a, a crucial aspect to myself of how uh, we move forward uh, as, as, as a community. You know, sometimes I think there's this, I don't know if it's an assumption, maybe just a thought in general, um, that in order for minority voices, if you will, and um, you know, Hawaiians being that of sort in our own homeland, it sometimes may look like, you know, the only or the best way for us to make sure that voice is heard is to, and appropriately many times, is to rock the system and put the system in check. But um, I think we're talking about the validity and the value of being engaged in the system. And although it might seem novel, it's not really the case for us as Hawaiians. No, absolutely not. Um, you know, I, the laws we spoke of earlier are only in place as a result of the engagement of our people from during the kingdom time, uh, during our, the territory time, and during the state. If, if uh, we didn't have the checks uh, that you talked about, rocking the boat, if you will, mm -hmm. uh, you know, those laws that we rely upon today wouldn't exist. Um, that said, it also meant that in, uh, in a lot of instances, our people were engaged as decision makers, as lawmakers. Uh, it's a very Hawaiian, uh, I think, um, to be involved in politics. You know, the political landscape has changed over time, but, um, you know, our people's engagement in those arenas is not a new thing. It's something that we've seen, um, you know, we from the time of the kingdom, you know, voter turnout, for example, was very, very, very similar to what voter turnout was by Hoynes during the territory, you know? And so I think, you know, I think we went through a period in which maybe some of our people thought it wasn't the right thing to do to engage in that space and, and just to be engaging outside, rocking the boat, if you will. But I think we get the best results when we're doing both. Um, so yes, we still need to be held accountable, but absolutely being a part of the system and making the decisions and thinking about Native Hawaiian uh, rights up front, I mean, mm -hmm. I think we'll just have better results that way. And, and we have, and, and hopefully we improve uh, uh, on that mm -hmm. and, and continue to re-engage. Right, you know, I know we've talked before and you've mentioned the fact, um, it's kind of like this factoid that I've always remembered about how engaged Hawaiians were specifically during the territory mm -hmm. when it came to um, even I think it was the development of the parties that right. existed. So in Hawaii, the Democratic Party, the Republican Party, and the Home Rule Party, which were the first three parties, uh, were all created by Hawaiians. Um, and many of those Hawaiians were actually engaged and involved in you know, trying to resurrect the kingdom mm -hmm. soon after the overthrow. Um, and you know, they didn't stop those efforts, but in order to take care of their people, uh, you know, they engaged in the system that existed. Uh, and we helped develop so we basically developed the systems. And during the territory, we dominated territorial politics. So most of the legislators at that time were Native Hawaiian. So you know, we helped to create the system that we find ourselves in. And, it, and I think it's just natural for us and responsible for us to re-engage in those systems and, um, yeah, and make Hawaii the place that it should be that respects uh, the first people here. Nani loa ka ike puna. E ho'omalolo ho kako a ke ho'i mai, e ho'opu'ulu a pani ia ke a kuka kuka vai vai no. A ohe ulu e loa ai ka po kole o kalou. Mole ka puka lana kila i ka ho'oulu kupono ia. A ua ho'omaka ko ako leo ho'omaka o kou ia, maka punana leo no. 
He Hawaii au, imi au i ka naao au. Kolo lei ke la. O ka punana leo, he ka hua paa no ia no ko Hawaii ma wala kai o ke ia mua aku. E kai no aku no ma aha punana leo kiko org. Aloha nui o wau no o Aaron Sala. Aloha o wau o Snowbird Bento. O wau o Sean Kiko Pimentel. I am Lehua Kalima and I watch OEV TV. Nana wau ya OEV TV. Nana maua ya OEV TV. And we are Nana Hoa. And you're watching... Asa and Ulelia and Drew, mahalo again for taking the time to um, hang out, as it were, and engage in this discussion. And you know, when you think about Mauna Kea, the, the stature, um, the majestic nature of that mountain, even the name, Akea, um, is a clear indication of the breadth of what that mana represents. And I think also the myriad of Ha'avina that we could sit here and talk about for hours that are being brought forth um, from what's taking place there. However, our time together has come to an end. So like we talked about during the break, I'd just like to ask each of you mm -hmm. if you could share in a sentence or two at most what you personally feel one of the biggest takeaways or ha'avina to be had are. Go ahead. You know, um, thank you very much, Amy, for, for having us and for having the conversation. And as we think about that great expanse of Mauna Kea, for me, it's just that ex just in that one situation, just the expanse of knowledge. Um, and I guess that it's incumbent on each of us mm -hmm. to really understand um, any situation, any place, um, other people that are involved in, in those places and to get as much information as we can. Um, in this day and age, so much information flies around on our phone and who knows, you know, you don't know for certain, you know, what to do with it at mm -hmm. times. Um, you know, one of my professors at the university used to all the time say, you know, what, what's your source? Cite your source. And that's, that's still, you know, know, know that information, know where it comes from, understand it, um, and then do something about it. Really? Okay. Okay. Drew, Jocelyn, who's up next? Well, I'll, I'll go. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I guess I would say when we are engaged and participating, Native Hawaiian knowledge and values have been and can still be incorporated into decision making today. Mm -hmm. um, and I think we saw that uh, in Mauna Kea specifically, uh, and we see that in, in the laws that we talked about earlier. So, uh, and hopefully we'll continue to see more of that. Really? Mahalo. Uh, no, again, mahalo for having me here. Um, not only are we talking about great conversation, but I'm sitting next to three beautiful wahine. So, um, no, mahalo again. You know, it's 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 like everybody said. It's it's important to become engaged and be part of the process. And knowledge is power. You know, if you don't know the the answer to anything, ask questions. Talk to your uh, relatives. Talk to your your people. Talk to your kupuna. And maybe from there you can feel something that might incite you to come and be part of it. Uh, be part of the policy making process or be part of uh, engaging the community. So. Again, that's what I feel is really important nowadays and how we can move forward. So mahalo for having me. Mahalo ho ya uko e kolu. A peya ho i ko umahalo ya uko. No kalauna anamay no keya pukano a hai ola loala. Anoka ike ho waku no keya kumuhana make kiko i. E kele akuno ya uwiwi kiku tv. Kahio mauna kea. Ae like meko mao e nana pu maina polo kalamu e ae apao o kamako kanela kiko ho e o Oceanic Time Warner Cable. Helu kolu nua ono. Aloha.